Good afternoon. Today I have the lovely Victoria with me. Hiya, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello, I'm Victoria Dowd and I'm a crime writer and I write the Smart Women's Mystery Series. You can see probably there. <laughs> That's my first book, The Smart Woman's Guide to Murder. The second one is Body on the Island and the third one is coming out on the 16th of September so very very soon um, I think it's available for pre-order and that's the Supper Club Murders and basically they are kind of classic whodunits uh, but with a bit of dark humour and they follow in the first one they're a book club um, book club gets a bit disbanded though after that after they start kind of dying <laughs> Um, and they get snowed in at a large mansion. The, the narrator is fairly unreliable. She's called Ursula Smart, hence the Smart Woman's Guide to Murder. And her mother is Pandora. They have a kind of very spiky sort of relationship. I think I have your new one to read, actually, by the 16th. I'm sure I've got an arc of it. So. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I hope you like it. It's a nerve wracking time when the arcs go out. <laughs> yeah, it just reminded me. I'm like, oh, that rings a bell. I'm sure that's on my Kindle somewhere. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, I shall wait to see what you think. <laughs> Should have read it before the state really, shouldn't I? But never mind. <laughs> I can't. Um, so, did you always want to be a writer? Yeah, always from a very young age. But sort of got sidetracked with having to have a real job <laughs> for a while um, and I was a, I was a barrister for a long time a criminal defense barrister so heavily involved in crime in the, in a good way <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I was always always writing for quite a long time it used to write a lot of short stories and they got published and and then I won a prize for one and thought actually I might be able to do this and then Joffy books took me on um and the rest is, yeah, books. <laughs> um, what made you uh, take the leap and write a novel? I think because I'd had this idea that I definitely wanted to try and write a kind of, you know, an old fashioned murder mystery, because I read them voraciously now, and I'm a huge fan of Agatha Christie. And I'd always wanted to see if I could do it, basically. Um, I had written a book before um, that was sort of historical fiction, but nothing much came of that. And I thought, oh, you know, shall I let this go? Shall I stop? And I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to do this. And even if it never gets out there and only my husband ever reads it and my kids, you know, I've done it and I've, you've done, I've done the thing I wanted to do. And they read it and said, why don't you send it off to some people? So I did. And Fortunately, he got it published. And did you know when you wrote the, that first book that it was going to be a series? Not to start with, no. I thought it was going to be just a book that was a murder mystery. And then I started the second one before I got the contract for the first one, because I thought, you know what, these women, I loved the characters so much. I loved writing them so much. And I thought, you know, there's a lot more here that I could do with them and take it further um, and give them a huge story arc. Because that's kind of a really good thing about a series. You get this ability to give them a lot more backstory and take them further and give them all kinds of different new characteristics. So I'd started the second one when they took me on with the first one. So that was quite handy. <laughs> Who's your favourite character that you've written so far? Oh, that's a tricky one. I would have to say Ursula because she's the narrator. So basically, I have to sort of semi-inhabit her when I'm writing it because it's all from her point of view. But I do really love her relationship with her mother. And it, it's, because it's been able to flourish a lot more in book three because originally people are like, oh, they're so mean to each other all the time. Why are they so mean to each other? But actually there is genuine kind of love there and a real bond. And Aunt Charlotte, I love her as well because she is just ridiculous, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to be a character in any of the three books so far, which one would you choose to be in? 
oh my god <laughs> that's really difficult obviously one who survives that would be good <laughs> I think I'd probably choose to be Pandora um the mother because she's just she just gets away with saying so much that you can't do in real life you know and you can say all these kind of unfortunate things <laughs> I think she's probably got the best dress sense as well. <laughs> what's been your most fun scene to write so far and what's been the most difficult, obviously without spoilers? Okay, um, the most fun scene I think to write is one that is coming up in book three. I absolutely love writing the comedy bits and especially the bits that are at awkward moments. Um, and this is particularly awkward because this one is focusing on, um, so this will be book four. This one is focusing on a courtroom. So all of the characters are introduced as they are witnesses in the case. Um, and there's a minor incident involving one of Aunt Charlotte's pickled eggs and one of the barrister's wigs. <laughs> I absolutely loved writing that and and the reactions of the people in the court why she's got a pickled egg there you know for a start <laughs> bizarre so I've absolutely loved writing that scene um but the one the scene that I found most difficult to write is a scene at the end of book three um where one of the characters dies um, I can't really say any more than that, but somebody who was reading the ARC, one of the book reviewers, actually DM'd me and put, you evil woman, I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> but yeah, anybody's fair game, really. <laughs> but it was a very difficult scene to write, actually, because you know at that point you're not going to write that person anymore. They're not going to be resurrected at any point. Yeah. Um, one of my favourite authors hinted at killing one of his characters and I was ready to send him lots of sweary messages. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's about two in the morning as well, I think. I'm like, yeah. But it was fine. <laughs> All was well. Yeah. I don't think this is going to be... It's not, it's not hugely dramatic, but it is a bit. <laughs> I'm intrigued now and kind of scared, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you hide any secret jokes or messages or Easter eggs in your books that only a few people will get? Many, absolutely tons. So in the late in the latest one that's coming out, um, there's a little red monkey called Dupin. And obviously, you know, it's in reference to Edgar Allan Poe's Murders in the Rue Morgue, the first detective book. And I reference Agatha Christie books quite a lot in there as well and other books. And I kind of, Put a bit of a spin on it my my favorite one so far is, is referencing cluedo though because <laughs> so many people had said these books are like cluedo i was like why not make it like cluedo though? and i referenced that quite a bit um so yeah i, I have a lot of fun doing that sort of thing because i know that quite a lot of um sort of you know people who like golden age detective stories read them and they will they'll hopefully get the references <laughs> Um, and I've got to ask you about the Lego. <laughs> we were talking before we started recording, and I've got to ask. <laughs> I've now become famous for my Lego village. <laughs> Maybe Lego will get in touch. Basically, particularly in the book that's set in a village, it's set in a Dartmoor village that I've invented, basically. But it's like the classic, you know, kind of country little village in that Miss Marple sort of way. Um, and there's various locations and they're on what's called a safari supper club, which I'd only recently heard of, which is, you know, they go from house to house, everybody having a course in each house. So, but the problem was people keep disappearing and reappearing, which I wanted to use quite a lot. And it's dark and you don't know who's there at what points. But then I started thinking, I don't know who's there at what points. So I thought, how am I gonna do it? I have to have some sort of, you know, little figures or something. And my son is nine years old and is Lego mad. I thought, ah, oh, 
and got him to build me this whole village. It basically became a huge project to avoid writing and work. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it had the full church and everything and, you know, the little vicarage and it had all the, the little people. And because I needed to remember which person was which, I often did things like colour code them or choose ones I thought looked like the characters. So there's a there's a Reverend Green or Ver as he is in my book in reference to Cluedo. So I chose a green guy. And like we were talking about earlier, some of them get switched in and out by my little boy when he decides, oh, no, I need that character. And I get up and there's, you know, rather than there being Reverend Green there, there's Chewbacca has suddenly appeared in my book. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm like, you, you can't, you can't just take the figures back. They've got to stay out. <laughs> there's no room for Chewbacca in this book. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so funny. <sighs> yeah, I think you're the only person that, that I know so far that has a whole Lego, you know, it's <laughs> cool yeah I think it'll get it'll catch on it'll go viral so hopefully Lego will be in touch for me to do their murder mystery sets. they do all kinds of things though in Lego they've got they've got a Hercule Poirot they've got Sherlock Holmes hang on have we got Sherlock Holmes here? Sherlock Holmes is on my desk actually complete with Deerstalker <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I have to find room for him in the next book. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'll manage. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Not too back of it. <laughs> no. Yeah, that would just, yeah, unless, like you say, fancy dress party yeah. or something. I'm sure that's the only way you can get away with it. <laughs> definitely. Actually, a fancy dress party is a really good idea because you never know who anybody is and if they're well enough disguised, and we could definitely make room for a Chewbacca then, couldn't we? They're a bit hot. <laughs> Never go as the gorilla to a party. <laughs> yeah, or just make it in the middle of winter, then it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have any fears or phobias, and would you write about them? Well, my biggest fear is heights. I'm, I'm very, very bad with heights, and I seem to get worse with that. I think I would write about them, yeah. I would have no problem. Probably easier to write about things that you're actually genuinely frightened of yourself. Um, so recently, I, I love Burr Island, which is the island that inspired, and then there were none. And Agatha Christie has a writing hut there and everything. And right at the very top is a little sort of an old kind of stone building that I think they used to climb up. And I think it was originally an ancient little monastery but I think the fishermen used it to shout that there were pilchards coming in and that. So I thought it'd be really nice to climb to the top of there with my family. Oh no, <laughs> it was awful. I had to literally crawl. It was just like, it's so steep and the rock face. So yeah, heights is my, my big fear. Yeah, I always think I'm fine with heights and then actually in a situation like that, probably not. No, no, I'm not very good with heights. I'm not very good with lots of things like that. Though. Blood, I'm not very good with blood either. <laughs> it just, and I do write about that quite a lot. Well, would you ever write sort of towards the more gritty end of the crime? Possibly, yeah. I I have got in mind that I really want to write a standalone gothic kind of thriller because um, I absolutely love gothic fiction. Um, and, you know, the big old country house, no comedy, very straight face. There's definitely something in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be awesome, yeah. I don't think I'd go for anything sort of... CSI style though I'm not very good with the whole and you'd have to know an awful lot about internal organs <laughs> and viscera Ooh. no I'm not sure I'd do that but yeah definitely go for the more sort of creepier darker side ones yeah sounds awesome <laughs> would you bring any of your characters in give them a little cameo I might do actually yeah or it would be really difficult to take a character like Ursula and just for instance separate her out from the others and there'd be no comedy because people would be expecting there to be something like that but she does have quite a dark side in the books so 
she sees she's very grief stricken a lot of the time and sees her father's ghost and all that kind of thing and I played around with the idea of her being in a standalone by herself but I don't think that that would quite work because people would be expecting that comedy so I think I would possibly put them in as a little cameo or mention them give them a little walk on part if you were to join your characters up with another um investigative fictional duo or team who would you choose oh can i choose one from the past <laughs> can i choose miss marple <laughs> <laughs> definitely miss marple i think she because there is quite a lot of dry humor with her but i think she might be appalled at some of the behavior <laughs> of my women absolutely appalled but that would be fantastic to be able to do that yeah and um do you get much chance to read yeah i read quite a lot actually yeah i find you know quite inspiring i like to obviously i read still read a lot of golden age detective fiction but i like to read you know more modern stuff as well I read quite a lot actually yeah i've just finished the appeal that was fantastic that was really good and the whole new way it's written really really good have you made lots of author friends since you became a writer I have but they're all on zoom all the time which is yeah difficult but we're kind of branching out a little there are possibilities of meetups and stuff like that I'm in a group obviously I'm in the UK crime book club that um, there's a lot of authors in that I think you're a member of too and that's fantastic but I'm also a member of a group called The Debuts. I think there's a debut for every year now, but basically we all got together because our books came out in lockdown. Um, both, both of my books so far. This is the first book I've got coming out when it's not a lockdown, but they're fantastic writers. There's a lot of crime writers in there and we kind of support each other. We have a, a Friday Zoom every Friday at five o'clock and there's a lot of, you know, honesty as well like oh my god I've just discovered this thing called net galley what is this <laughs> you know? and it, it we've all been on that journey together you know and 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 bad days good days asking questions that you know what happens when your editors stay this what happens with that because you you're basically you're on your own most of the time as a writer you've no idea how it works you just fall straight in at the deep end so that's been fantastic to to make friends like that and I'm hoping to meet more of them in person yeah it does feel like people are starting to meet up and things so hopefully are you, planning, are you planning on going to any of the festivals I am I have got a festival at the end of September I'm appearing at the International Agatha Christie Festival festival put my teeth in <laughs> I'm supposed to be speaking that. Let's so hope I can get the words out. I'm speaking about um, adaptations of And Then There Were None. So I'm really looking forward to that. That goes over quite a few days. It's all in Devon kind of area where she lived. So that'll be absolutely brilliant. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I'm going to be speaking at Barnes Book Festival, which is a new one that's um, got a couple of crime writers in there I'm chatting to. So things are happening. And then you'll have to go to Harrogate next year. Oh, yes. I was meant to go this year, but I couldn't. So I've already got a house organised with some author friends. I didn't organise it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have somewhere to stay already. The countdown started. <laughs> I went for the first time this year. I, I got home Sunday afternoon and by nine o'clock I'd booked my hotel for next year. Oh, it's that good, is that? Fantastic. Yeah, there yeah. was a lot of talk on our, our groups and that saying, it's so brilliant. I'm booking it again. Do you want to be in our house with us? So I'm sorted for accommodation. I will see you there. You will. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I'll definitely be there. Yep. Yeah, my hotel room is booked. And I'm staying with a friend, which would be really cool. So, yeah. Fabulous. I'm excited already. It's miles away. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> um, and do you get a lot of feedback from your readers? I do, actually, yeah. Um, more and more. Um, 
because of it being a series and people are very invested in the characters by this point so there's lots of questions and I think like I was telling you earlier somebody got in touch and <laughs> said the ending of the third one um you evil woman what have you done <laughs> So there is as really lovely as well that people, you know, have taken the characters to their hearts. They love them and they kind of they know them, you know. And so and it's really I mean, that's the, the beauty of sort of, you know, social media and online. You can actually connect with people really easily. Um, and sometimes, you know, their opinions on things or there's a particular character in book two <clears throat> who people after the book came out said, we love this guy. I can't believe he's gone. Can we have him back? And so I thought about it. I thought, yeah, why not? Let's bring him back. Perhaps some love interest. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, if we were, say, at Harrogate next year, who would be an author that you would fangirl over and completely lose it if you were to meet them oh my goodness so many I suppose um gosh let's think who would I really fangirl over I'd really want to see Sarah Ward I love her books so much they're so fantastic and you know people like Bonnie McBird who I have met online and I've talked to these people on online but I've never actually met them in real life and they seem, you know, like kind of super stars, basically. <laughs> yeah, that, that, those kind of people, I think. Not yes. many. I think basically everybody is a superstar. <laughs> but people will be wanting to meet you and thinking the same. People like me will Possibly. be just as excited to meet you as I will <laughs> some of these other people so that's very kind of you possibly I was on a book club the other day and someone asked had you not thought of putting your photograph in the back of your books like some authors do and I hadn't really ever considered that or putting anything about me you know um because she, she then said because sometimes it's very disappointing when you meet the authors in real life <laughs> and I'm so like okay Oh no! <laughs> I've not met up to my expectations. <laughs> I don't know what she was expecting. <laughs> oh, the friend that I met at Harrogate said that we're going to need like some kind of cheat sheet next year with authors' face pictures with their faces and their names yeah. because they're walking around and they've got lanyards and they've got their names on, but even then they've got you know pseudonyms and stuff. And we're like that person that's familiar. Why do and you know it's some author that's written some huge book <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean well some of them you know immediately like Val McDermott you know I think if I'd saw her in real life I'd probably faint <laughs> we saw her me and my friend and went up to her and she pointedly ignored us she didn't she probably gets a lot though isn't she yeah yeah but, you know, Mike Craven and Mark Bill and um, Ian Rankin said good morning to me while I was drinking <gasps> coffee. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. It must be tempting to go, like, taking covert photographs. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to bloody Scotland next weekend and Val McDermott's going to be there. So I'm going to give her another chance. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. See. And look out yeah, for Emma Christie. Emma Christie's on the shortlist and she is in my debuts group and she is so lovely. She's such a lovely person. She's really oh, cool. I will. I will say Victoria told me that you're awesome and it I'll is. take a picture. <laughs> She's fantastic. Amazing. Um, in your journey so far since becoming an author, is there one standout moment for you? One standout moment. I think it has to be the moment when um, the first book was published and it was out there. And, you know, it was just on Amazon. The book came through the post. And I, that is actually me. It's, it's kind of surreal. It's, it's, it's almost unreal in a way that you, this book that you've lived with in your head and you know writing for for you know years and thinking about is suddenly just there as an actual physical object and you, your name is on it and you think 
oh i never you know you envisage it so many times but it's completely different when it actually happens uh, that was yeah mind-blowing what's your biggest dream oh you have- it's got to be to have a number one bestseller hasn't it <laughs> but i don't know well i'd have said whodunits can't do that but they're getting a lot more popular now aren't they so yeah actually um and sort of cozy crime seems to be having quite a resurgence which is awesome yeah maybe even the book a prize you never know <laughs> i doubt that. that's a stretch that that's too far. <laughs> <laughs> no reason why not no i don't think i'm about for taking on hillary mantel and margaret outward they're not quite up there <laughs> <laughs> Well, I won't be around forever. It's fine. You're the new generation. Just yeah. Out. <laughs> um, if you get any free time, what would you like to do with it? Um, I swim in the sea quite a lot. Obviously, I read a lot. Um, but you know, I kind of that's almost become part of the job now. <laughs> but yeah, I like to sea swim quite a lot. I find that really relaxing, and cold, obviously, at the moment, but. <laughs> But I love doing that. I love sea swimming and gardening, which sounds very boring, but I get a lot of inspiration in the garden, a lot of plots and it's peaceful, you know, calm. So I I like to do that quite a bit. Lose myself, deadheading. (laughs) (laughs) Very common amongst you weird also types, I find. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people do get their inspiration out in the garden, you know, I think it's peaceful, quite... And you can think quite a lot. The same with the swimming, you know, you get a lot of time to to just think and let your mind open up quite a lot, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> or think about shopping lists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, either or. <laughs> um, if you're able to travel to any period of time, either forwards or backwards, where would you go? Oh, it would definitely be backwards. And I think I would probably go back to kind of the late 1920s. I love all the kind of the glamour of the art deco and the cocktail parties, all that sort of jazz. And I'd love to do that. And, you know, all the sort of things you do find in the Agatha Christie style books. I would really love that. The dresses, the parties, someone's just, you know, keeled over with a bit of cyanide. (laughs) <laughs> Everybody just carries on partying. Oh, how unfortunate. <laughs> Obviously, it would have to be in a giant house, you know, with a library and a candlestick. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, actually. They had massive libraries back then yeah. in their houses. Mine are just yeah, stacked yeah. up in uneven piles everywhere. Yeah. I moved to my Kindle because, you know, storage and then started a signed book collection. So now oh. I have issues of storage and I wouldn't get rid of them for the world. But no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah, you can't get rid of the signed ones, can you? I always find that bizarre, though, when you get one at like a secondhand bookshop that's got an inscription in it to my darling, wonderful <laughs> wife or something like that. They're just giving it away. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> big story behind that. Probably involving divorce, I would think. Yes. <laughs> <With those. laughs> um, who was your first celebrity crush? My first celebrity crush. Oh, wow. Well, it's going to have to be, yeah, Boy George. That's <laughs> so weird. My mother had to have a conversation. I was very young. I would be about, be about, I don't know, about 10 or 11, something like that. My mother had to have a conversation with me. Um, <laughs> that was, yeah. But, you know, like all sort of young girls, I was into pop groups, stuff like that. Nick Kershaw, all that kind of thing. Huge crushes on those sort of people. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think, I don't know if he's come up before, but yeah, it's quite um, interesting. It, it does tend to be the same. Yeah, same it's never people. authors. It's never authors. <laughs> well, authors are I like can't. weird. They're <laughs> introverts and they're like scared of the light and people and stuff. So they're hardly yeah. going to be the, the object of someone's fantasies. <laughs> Unless it's like misery. That's <laughs> that's not what you want. You don't want a number one fan. 
<laughs> well, uh, one of the authors that I'm particularly friendly with, um, he calls his, well, not quite his art group, but he has a group called his Twisted Annies. Um, and we are um, based on Annie Wilkes. Oh, superb. How fantastic. <gasps> yeah, so um, it's now just an, a running joke to, because <laughs> I was bored one day. And there was a picture of um, of Paul Sheldon in the bed and Annie standing over him. So I switched the guy's head for this author's head. And now <laughs> it's on his it's banner for his group. So, Super. yeah. Oh, that's yeah, brilliant. Is. Twisted Annie's. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, well, luckily for him, Ish, he lives quite far away. So he <laughs> thinks he's safe. But... <laughs> He thinks he's safe, but now, you know, the airports are opened up, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, or, you know, I could drive or get the train. I'm, I'm oh, fast really? Not that yeah. far, then? He's not, like, well, in Australia. <laughs> um, yeah, one of his annies is, so I think he feels safe from her, but the rest yeah. of us... <laughs> You've got it all marked out on the murder board. Red string. <laughs> yeah, his, I think he's just never quite sure, which is what I like. He's never really 100% sure that we're not going to descend on him and hobble him. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's his principal fear. Have you asked him that question? What's your biggest fear? <laughs> <laughs> I did, I, I think. Opening the I door don't... to you. <laughs> <laughs> he seems scared enough if we say we're going to get in a car and come for a cup of tea. So, you know, bloody wimp, honestly. <laughs> I'm so intrigued to know who this person is now. <laughs> it's uh, Mark Tilbury. <laughs> Mark's marked now. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. His uh, his girlfriend is an honorary Annie as well. So, oh, brilliant. Oh, that's yeah, so which is brilliant. hilarious. You have to get t-shirts. I have to get yeah. t-shirts for Harrogate. Yeah, Cats. the whole merch thing. <laughs> well, I keep trying to get Tony Forder to get merch for his Bliss stuff, but he keeps turning us down because we're Bliss X. Are you? Oh my goodness, this is fantastic! How many groups like this are there? I didn't even know there were things like this. I'd love to start my own. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, well, the the whole anything came about by accident, and then the Bliss X thing came about by accident. So. You know, these things happen. <laughs> yeah, just think of a cool name. I and, love it. Yeah. So I'll have to, one day I'll have to wear an Annie and then the next day a Bliss set. <laughs> yeah, mix and match. <laughs> yeah. I speak to so many authors, I'd never keep them all happy. No. <laughs> It'd definitely be trouble. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, demanding creatures, authors, oh, I yes. find. Always wanting something. Yeah. Like like spoilt little children, really. <laughs> You've eaten too many sweeties. <laughs> but you're also lovely, so it's fine. And um, books. We were here to talk about books. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Um, so you've... Have you started your next book? I have. It's almost finished as well. So <laughs> the third one comes out on September 16. That's the Supper Club Murders. But the fourth one, hopefully going to come out next year, and is uh, based on a fort in the Solent. So, you know, they're, they're kind of these huge round structures that were built by Lord Palmerston years and years and years ago but they were never really used for much. Um, I think they were used a little bit in the Second World War as defences. One of them has been turned into quite a nice hotel. Some of them mm -hmm. haven't been developed at all. They're for sale, I think, at the moment, but I'm not sure. Yeah, they're, they're, they're quite a lot of money. <laughs> but I'm setting it there at a crime writers' convention. Um, so there's going to be... I've basically I've had so much fun writing this one because... I've had to obviously invent crime writers and you know there's plenty of inspiration out there on the various groups and invent their books as well so I've had to basically write 
little mini series for each character and the main guy who's organized this kind of festival is this multi-millionaire really successful crime writer and he writes a series that's the Sheridan Lafoy series and he's got and I've had to invent this whole character who's kind of like a sort of modern day campion sort of Peter whimsy kind of thing and um but he's very modern um and and he's you know he's got all these little quirks and he drives a yellow bentley and all this and i've had great fun just writing all these books so maybe i should write the sheridan lavoy series <laughs> <laughs> and there's all that intrigue you know like you get at the kind of crime festivals and stuff um so i've had a lot of fun writing that one that's been great and so yeah, it's in a kind of well first draft almost finished and then do you know what you're doing next i think so i think the fifth one is is going to be centered on the main character's possible wedding so hopefully yeah i love a murder at a wedding <laughs> <laughs> But well, maybe I should have it as fancy dress. But I need to get some <laughs> fancy dress in there somehow. Can you have a fancy dress wedding? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. I think my cousin had like a, I don't know if it was Alice in Wonderland or something like that um, themed wedding. It was awesome. Oh, that's lovely. No, there was no theme to mine. Oh, I should have had a theme. I should have had like Agatha Christie or something. <laughs> or Cluedo. <laughs> <laughs> How would your husband be? For <laughs> he has no choice, really. He has absolutely no choice in any of that. The amount of Agatha Christie that's inflicted on my husband and children has to be seen to be believed. My son comes home from school and I'm like, shall we have a marple? <laughs> <laughs> he must be the only nine-year-old boy who sits watching Joan Hickson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. But they're, they're cool. They need to learn these things young. Yeah. They need to teach kind of had enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said she's 15 now and she's kind of, she'll just about do, and then there were none, the big sort of, you know, Aidan Turner one, but even that's pushing it now. But she's, you know, she likes the kind of new modern stuff like uh, Knives Out and things like that. So it is there, it is, it is getting a bit trendier, possibly. Midsummer Murders, though, is definitely off the cards for everyone except me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Aidan Turner would pretty much uh, tempt you to watch anything, really, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> it Basically. wouldn't matter what it was. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Especially in the towel. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> We're such perps, aren't we? Yeah, I know. That is in the book as well. So that is. That's that's allowed. That is legit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, I don't think I have any more questions for you unless you think there's anything I haven't asked you that you want to tell us about. No, I think that's it. Really. We've covered most things from fancy dress to, to murdering people whilst in fancy dress and Lego. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mention books occasionally. Yeah, we, we, we read some books a little bit. <laughs> we touched on it anyway so that's fine <laughs> um, so before we go would you like to just remind everyone where they can find out more about you and where they can get your books from yeah they're available on amazon and they are the supper club murders is coming out on the 16th of september um, so very very soon um, and the other two body on the island and the smart woman's guide to murder are already out there and I have a website, victoriadow.com, if you need to know anything more about me and my Lego. <laughs> and my bizarre processes. <laughs> and there are pictures. I want to see pictures. Oh, yes. There's pictures on there. I should put more on, shouldn't I, of the Lego? They're definitely on my Twitter, I'm sure. And on things like Facebook and everything. You know, we're all on everything now, aren't we? There's nothing hidden now. No. <laughs> yeah, we get over. That's what I say to people. I get everywhere. If someone yeah. joins a group and they're like, fancy seeing you here. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm I know. <laughs> I know. You see the little icons come up. You think, oh, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? 
Oh, well, I think that's everything. Then. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's been a very nice way to spend an afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for having me on.